So what I do in order to make some easy dungeon maps is that I use a software called Albert Rodeo. Now, Albert Rodeo um, is kind of like Roll20, if you know that. You can use the software to play D&D online with um, your friends or your party. But you can also use it at the table. Um, if you have like multiple devices, you could put one in the middle. So if you just press start a game, you can put a password on your game. Or you can choose not to. I'm, I'm not going to put a password on mine. And I'm not going to do a whole Albert Rodeo tutorial. I'm just going to show you how I use it. So let's say that you are about to run this dungeon here called Nomengard. Now, if you had this map, what I did before is that I would actually draw it um, on a piece of paper as the party kind of explored the different areas of the dungeon. But as you can see, there's quite a lot of rooms here. There's a total of 15 rooms in this particular dungeon. And it would be kind of hard to get the layout right, and the players would have to wait for me to sit and, and draw it out. And it could be a little messy. So what I'm doing instead is I'm actually taking this exact map and I'm going to save it to my desk desktop. You could um, also take a screenshot, or, or sorry, a picture um, with your phone or something if you own the book and you don't own it on D&D Beyond or uh, another PDF. But if you have it here, like on D&D Beyond, it's really easy to scrap the, the dungeon um, layout. Then I go back into Albert Rodeo, and then I can press this icon over here in the right hand corner and then I can make a background for this particular game and I can press the plus sign to import the Nomengard map that we just extracted and then I can simply select that one and boom we get Nomengard now when I am playing um, let's say I'm playing online I will use tokens to represent the um, party. If you are playing, uh, let's say, just a, you know, at the table, you could use tokens if you wanted to, or you could like you use nothing. Um, you wouldn't. You could just use like theater of the mind, and you could have it um, maybe like on an iPad that's in the middle of the screen, and then you would have um, control all their rodeo on um, a laptop or another iPad or something. So. Right now, the players can see everything, and we don't really want that. We want the players to be able to come in here at the river, for instance, and then just only see this part and not all the rooms. So we have to use Fog of War, and if we press on this cloud here, we can use Fog of War, and we can use different tools to do it with. I usually take the square, and I simply place it over the entire map. Now, if you press this I, you will see what the players are seeing. Like if other people are joining your Albert session, and you can share the link down here, by the way, um, by adding a party member. Um, there we go. And then you can share this link with them and they will be able to join. So if they do that, they would see this, which is essentially just a blank screen because now I have fogged the entire area. So in order to reveal some of it, you have to press this scissor icon, and then the areas that I now rem remove will remove the fog of war. So let's say I want to remove this chunk here. You can see it, it's grayed out like this, and if I press the eye, this is now what the players can see. I usually do it in squares. You can also paint it um, with this brush here if you want to. You could go through and paint it up like this, if, if that's what you want to do. Um, but it takes a little longer, so usually I just do it, you know, like in chunks, and I will reveal this, and I'll reveal this, and maybe this. Oops. There we go. This in here, maybe that there. Down here, and up here. Now, if I press the I, you can see that I've kind of revealed everything the players will be able to see now. I know they'll get some stuff like, you know, the G1, the G2, um, that wouldn't really make sense to them, but it, it, it's nice for the DM to have that, and it doesn't really bother the players. Now, this can get a little messy to look at from the DM's perspective, so you can use the eraser tool here 
and you can erase the uh, sections that you just deleted to kind of clean it up a little bit. You just have to be careful you don't press this out here because then you remove the entire fog of war, but you can undo it with a control C uh, set. So now this is what the players can see. And let's say that the players are moving in and exploring and they decide to enter the cave, let's say here. So they go up here and they enter this room. What you would do is then simply reveal this room to the players, roughly like so, and you can remove it here as well if you want to, and now the players would see this room. So this is actually what I just do. I just go through like this, and you know, as the players explore, I simply just reveal the the net. Oops, there I just did the the thing you're not supposed to do, and then I simply just reveal the next room that they have entered as much as I want to reveal and there we go so this works really great for me and the only places you have to be a little careful is the places with secret doors like in here for instance if the players you know explored ah Jesus uh, there we go if they explored all this here um, you don't want to reveal the S here. Um, so, like, one way you could do it is simply to just leave that part out, like this. Um, but it is pretty obvious that there's a part missing there. So, I would probably just cut the, um, the corner or the, the wall here and cut that off entirely. So, if I press this one... And then I can refog this area, I think. Uh, there we go. Should be able to. Yeah, there we go. And now the players will not be able to see any part of that wall. I'll just leave that out. And so that's one way you can get around it. That's the only place where using this sort of system can get tricky. But I have yet to encounter a situation where I could not make it work. So this is what I do, it works really great. I don't have to spend any time drawing a map, making um, a, a map. It just really, it, it just works. Now, it works best if you're doing theater of the mind because the, the squares are probably not gonna match up to you know the proper distance and stuff, but I'm not really worried about that because I only play theater of the mind. So I use this for like relative positioning. If you're here and the enemy is, here, you know, that, that, that's just the way I use it, relative positioning. So I'm, I'm not measuring stuff and, and saying like, you know, there's, oh, there's 10 feet between you and you can move 35 feet. I'm more playing like, okay, you can probably move around here in one turn of combat. So we play that part very loosely. We don't play it on a grid. So if you do that, you would probably need to use something more accurate, like a battle map. Um, or you could just switch to that whenever you enter combat. But yeah, that, that's how I do it. It works really well for me, and I just wanted to share that. Um, and, you know, maybe it, it helps some of you. I, I think I've, I've tried a few different things um, in order to, to make these maps, and this is by far the, the best and most time-saving one on, on my part. And my players think it works really great as well. I, I, I haven't had any negative feedback from it whatsoever. So I think it works really well. So, um, yeah, I hope you found it uh, useful and um, hit me up in the comments if you have any suggestions for me then I'd love to hear it so yeah thanks for watching